Last night on MasterChef Australia. One dish, one hurdle. Celebrity chef Guy Grossi proved too much for Justine when they went head to head. She definitely has the makings of a great chef. I've had the best day of my life. Tonight, two teams set sail for the high seas. I think the biggest challenge out here is going to be nobody getting seasick. As they serve up a dish for one of the country's best seafood chefs, Peter Kuravita. The pressure is on. And the perfect storm is brewing. Bait. You want to use bait. It could definitely be our downfall. It's 4.30 in the morning and the contestants are about to get the shock of their lives. Tough. I don't care. Chefs work crazy hours. They'll just have to get used to it. Morning. Let's wake up. We've got places to go. We've got people to see. Come on, wakey, wakey, let's go. Let's move it. Come on, Justine, wakey, wakey. Gary gave us absolutely no information as to why we were waking up so rudely at, I don't know, some for, some godforsaken time. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's only 4.30. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. How are you? <laughs> right, we've got stuff to do, yeah? We're busy. Let's go. Rock and roll, five minutes, out the door. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Gary was in my bedroom, I don't know what's going on. So nice to meet you. Okay. I'm thinking maybe we're cooking breakfast or something. I don't know. I have no idea. Morning. We're obviously cooking breakfast somewhere, I'd say. Come on, guys, let's go. When we leave the house today, we've got no idea where we're going. Uh, could be anywhere. OK, let's go! Into the abyss! <laughs> Gary collects us all and takes us for a little walk down Jones Bay Wharf. And we draw to a halt outside the Flying Fish restaurant. As we're standing out in front of the restaurant, Sarah and who I assume was the, the head chef from Flying Fish walk out. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Flying Fish Restaurant. And joining us here today is the owner and executive chef, Peter Kuravita. I'm Peter Kuravita, executive chef and co-owner of Flying Fish. This is my kitchen and seafood is my passion. I've been a chef for 30 years. I love cooking and I, I really love what I do. It's a passion. Forever chasing the taste. If you don't have passion, get out. Now, if there's anyone on this planet who knows about seafood, it's this man here. Welcome to Flying Fish. So, your challenge is this. You'll be divided into two teams, and working as teams, you will prepare and cook a three-course meal to serve at Flying Fish Restaurant. Wow. <laughs> That's exciting and daunting at the same time, because it's very well known for its amazing quality seafood and the quality of its dishes. You will be presenting your dishes to your three judges, Gary, Matt and George, as well as our seafood specialist, Peter. And at least one of your dishes in your three-course meal must contain seafood. Look at a beautiful piece of fish and then surround it with no more than three or four ingredients. Look for texture, look for flavour, look for appearance. Over-garnishing, 
over sourcing, I'm going to especially be watching for that and that's where I'll be the most critical. Remember, this is a first class restaurant and what you present to the judges must be first class to match. The quality of his food uh, and the dishes are so elegant. I'm just so scared that we're not going to be able to pull it off. There's just one other detail I need to mention. Tomorrow, you'll be catching your seafood yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I want to be in your team. <laughs> <laughs> that's wicked. I just burst out laughing because I wouldn't have a clue about how to catch a fish, so I'd better be on a team where there is someone that knows how to catch a fish. You'll be returning here tomorrow at first light, heading out in team boats, out past Sydney Heads, into the deep sea, where you will catch your fish, which you must scale, fillet, cook and serve. I love seafood. It's all probably because of my dad, watching him fillet fish, getting me to do it when I was a kid. You have about four hours to catch your fish, and each team's three-course meal must be finished by 1.30 p.m. Now, there's only one thing left for today, and that is to choose your teams. I do think today's team pick will be a little more strategic. Team captains are probably going to try and choose people that are more familiar with seafood or fishing, maybe. Justine, as winner of the invention test this week, you've won the right to be team captain of one of the teams. Now, are you going to go red or blue? Red. If we lose this challenge, someone will be eliminated. I want my team to win. I don't want to be on a losing team. I've got to win this. Justine, you also get to choose the captain of the opposing team. Who will that be? The person I'm picking is Trevor. I've picked Trevor today to be captain because he can be extremely dominant sometimes, sometimes overwhelming, and people don't like that. Um, you've got to kind of be a captain that's going to listen to the team. I know I'm going to be good at it. That's what I do for a living is directing people, telling people what to do. You now must choose your team members. Justine, you get to go first. First person I choose is Chris. We work consistently well together and I'd love you on my team. Shock. I get chosen first a lot, which is nice. It just gives me confidence that the people in my team, um, you know, trust my cooking ability. It's a nice feeling. The first person I choose is Andre. You've proven yourself to be a really good team player and a good chef, and also you're a good fisherman. So that can only help. The next person I choose is Tom. Welcome back. Back to the red team. The next person I'd like for the blue team is Sam. Julie. Ho. Lucas. Sandra and Jenny are last two to be picked again. Jenny's a great cook, but she's really scatty and she, she finds it very hard to focus. And Sandra's just really pig-headed and I don't think she's one of the stronger cooks of the group. Trevor, who's the final member of your blue team? I think we'll have Jenny. I'm so used to it, so it doesn't really matter, you know. At least I'm in a team. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Blue team, red team, you'll return here at first light tomorrow morning and there will be two boats ready for you on the wharf. I wish you all the best of luck. Walking down to the wharf this morning, we're really pumped to just get out to the open waters. I see our boat and it's actually slightly bigger than the Red Team's boat. We're very competitive. They're very competitive. We have until 1.30 to get three dishes on the plate. We'll see what happens. It's scary to think that the whole challenge basically hinges on what we catch today. We've got Trevor and Andre on the team who are both keen fishermen. I love the smell of fish, I love the look of it and I love feeling it through my fingers. I just want to catch a really big snapper because I've never caught one over a, a plate size. I'm really excited, I can't wait to get out there and catch some fish. 
I think the biggest challenge out here is going to be like nobody getting seasick. The waves are bloody huge today. This is why you take your tablets. Because this is how it's going to be for the next two hours. In our minds, especially mine, I'm thinking we're just going to get these big kingfish and you know beautiful snappers. I think our aim is to get out there, get some fish, and get back as soon as we can to start prepping. I'm happy if we get half a dozen, six fish for two ditches is fine. I hope that we actually catch some fish today because if we don't, we go to elimination. We're out in the middle of the deep blue sea now. Ready to catch some big fish. Well, then the skipper brought out the bait. He brought out some prawns and squid. Hawksby River prawns. It's a good bait for bottom feeders. I wouldn't eat it myself. So we basically just got to bait up our rods and drop them to the bottom and see what's there. And now we wait. And wait some more. To be honest, I start to worry that we may not catch a fish and in my mind I'm trying to think of how to turn vegetarian dishes into something seafood themed. I got nothing. Absolute nothing. You don't want to see a fish? Yeah, good idea, Trent. Hey! It's a little leathery. It's not a very good eating fish. Ah! Well done! My first fish. Different species leather jacket. It might be baiting leather jacket fish cakes for dinner. The skin's inedible and, you know, it's a very small fish, so you can only get very tiny fillets out of it. Hey! Sammy! We're only really getting leather jackets. Yeah, I reckon we give it another half an hour, Trev, because I'm getting a few bites here. We'll give it 20 minutes, yeah. right, and then we're gone. I reckon okay? so, mate, yeah. And then we head in. We're sort of really hoping for something good to come along. Oh, yeah! My first fish! I should go leather jacket. Teddy, I'm letting you go. You're free. Oh, I've got to let you go. He was so little. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, yeah, we got one. Yeah! Sergeant Baker. A little bit bony. And not a very nice fish to eat, but we can make a beautiful moose out of it. There we go. On ice. That's it. We're getting somewhere now. We've got two. It's got a bit of a kick. <laughs> Give me the glory. Ah, oh, season white. It's a, uh, yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! I catched the first proper fish. It was a blue moorwong. Magnificent fish. It was skill. Oh, 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 no, oh, oh, no, 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 no. It was precision fishing. Oh, he fell over his fishing rod. The fish nearly escaped through the whole other side of the boat. He stumbled all over like a goose. I thought this can't actually be happening. You didn't lose it, did you? No, I got it, I got it. I got it. Oh I got it. My I got it. It's alright, it's alright, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> they carry on like pork chops, those guys. <laughs> I know we've got a beautiful fish in the blue marwong in the esky. I figured it was better to have the time advantage and the extra time in the kitchen than to stay out there fishing for no reason. Let's give it, Jeff. Take us home. You don't know with those guys. Um, they could be bluffing. Mind you, their boat is disappearing off into the horizon. I know they were a bit nervous about seeing us head back in a lot earlier than them. I'm feeling a little bit of pressure because I'm captain. I've got to make a decision. Do we turn back with what we've got? Well, we've uh, got some fish, but they're quite small. <laughs> or do we continue and, by chance, we could get a beautiful, a larger fish? Yeah, I'm a bit concerned. We don't have a whole lot for the table yet. We're pulling up more and more leather jacket. Double leathery, which aren't ideal. 
They're really tasty fish. They're just a little bit small and fiddly. The Sergeant Baker has a lot of bones in it. It's not something you would fill it and serve. But we need something a bit more media, to be honest. Two more rounds of bait, and then we'll go home. There doesn't seem to be the fish that we expected. We've got to get something and get it quick. The great bait debate. Trevor decides to ask the skipper for use of some of his bait. I knew that these prawns were, you know, top quality, so I figured it'd be a great idea if we could get a full bag of those and um, use them in our meal. Captain said he's gonna give us a bag. Is and they're hogs through prawns. Perfectly edible, they're lovely. Yeah. And the prawns were only going to be used in a bisque, and the squid were using the tentacles. Look, the decision is a risky one, there's no doubt about it. It will either be received extremely well, or it will be, why the hell are you serving us bait? As we're coming into Jones Bay Wharf, um, we see our kitchens, which are set up in front of Flying Fish now. There's a huge shelf full of fresh produce, so we're just sort of trying to eye out everything, and there's loads of stuff we have access to. I will be working on the entree, leather jacket and potato salad with avocado and squid. That is actually the bait that was given to us by the captain of the charter. I mean, pan seared piece of blue mulwong on a bed of baked Whitloff with a prawn bisque and tomato concache. Okay. Beautiful. Done. What are we going to do for dessert? The strawberries, which you marinate them, macerate them, and then we do a white wine, ma Zabaglione. Jeannie is whisking up a Zabaglione, which is basically an Italian style custard. I will fillet the uh, leather jacket. Let's prep. I was in charge of filleting the uh, blue mulwong, frying it, and, and doing the main. Beautiful. I knew that these right. prawns were, you know, top quality. I was willing to take the risk because we had to do something that would make our food stand out. It's a 50-50 toss-up. I don't know which way it's going to go. Yes, we got a fishy, finally, Hello, yes. Boy. Doesn't feel very big, though. Leather jacket. A bit pathetic, but it's a fish. <laughs> Leather jackets are the pests of the sea. Oh, you're Sergeant Bacon. <laughs> Another leathery. I don't know if we should stuff around too much longer. We've got fish, we've got meat there to do an entree in a main, so let's do this. Hey, Ian, start those engines. Let's move. I guess our concerns are that we didn't catch the fish that we wanted. Our menu is going to have to be adjusted. We'll use the leather jackets for our main, like maybe four or five nicely panned, fried really fast. We've got uh, two Sergeant Bakers that can make a moose out of it. There's a ton of things we can do with what we've got. We've just got to be creative. Yeah, the girls are doing desserts again. It's not really that we've been lumped with it, wow. but both of us love it. I think we're feeling quite relaxed. We've got a nice little head start um, on the other team. We caught a couple of good fish, so yeah, we're confident. Anyone order fish? Yes, darling. Bring it up. So we have all our fish, all done, all clean, beautifully prepared, and now it's time to start cooking. We've got about an hour to do this. Trev, can you please switch on the barbie for me, mate? No worries. Red team drive. We get out of the boat, walk upstairs. The blue team is cooking already. Blue team has a half an hour head start on their cooking prep, and that freaks us out a little bit. 30 minutes could mean winning or losing the challenge. We have a look at the produce stand and make our decisions. Look at those beautiful tomatoes. Oh, well, that's what if we can't feed them. Yeah. I'm in charge of the entree, which is a stuffed zucchini flour. Yep, so we have three or four of those stuffed. We've stuffed it with a fish mousse and we've used the Sergeant Baker there. The main, we're going to do the leather jackets. Yeah, make the potatoes like you did the other day. Yeah. Yep. Mm. We're going to make a simple pan fry of the leather jackets on a bed of 
potato salad, braised fennel and some puree of capsicum. Okay, so for dessert we like the idea of the pear poached in red wine. We decide to use pears because they're seasonal. There's really nice cream over there, like double King Island cream. Well, you could make a Chantilly cream and mix honeycomb through it or something yep. like that. Yep, mm, yep. See, that'll go nice. Chantilly cream is a whipped cream flavoured with vanilla and sugar. All right, well, I think we're, we're pretty much set. With 50 minutes to do all the things we've set out to do, the pressure is on. I put Lucas and Chris to gut, scale and clean the fish. This is for the entree course. Um, we're making a fish mousse. I'm going to stuff zucchini flowers. So this doesn't have to be pretty, it's just got to be fast. Looks like we're going to have about 50, 55 minutes to do it, though. That is a worry. From the outside looking in, it looked like we were not going to make it. We have to have our dishes, we've been told, at 1.30 plated, ready to be served to the judges. Is everyone on track? Yes. Yeah, it looks like it. Our dessert is macerated strawberries, strawberries that have been marinated in sweet wine. Our entree is steamed leather jacket with a potato salad and squid on top. For mains, we have the blue mawong that Andre caught, and we're just pan searing that with some baked Whitloff. Sandra and I begin on the dessert, poaching the pear and making a little pear slice to dry out in the oven and making cream. Red Team's entree includes stuffed zucchini flowers with a sergeant baker mousse. In the main, we have some pan fried leather jackets on a bed of potato salad. We've also added an amuse bouche to start off the entire courses of the meal, and that includes potato and leek soup. The leek soup, which I'm doing, is pretty straightforward. I mean, you can actually put it on the stove and just let it cook away while you do other things. The idea of the little appetizer is just really appealing. It seems simple and beautiful, and hopefully it just has a bit of wow factor about it. How are you, Trevor? All right, Bones, on so the what's going right and what's not going to plan? Uh, everything's pretty much going right. We had a half hour head start as well because yes. we've decided to come in early after we've caught enough fish. So we've got plenty of time, plenty of time. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Good, Good luck, stuff. guys. For an hour, Jeannie was whisking the zabay on it. She was afraid that it might split, so she was pretty determined to keep going. We're making cat's tongues, which are just a classic French biscuit. I'm going to sprinkle some pistachios on it for some crunch, and they're going to sit on top of the dessert. Restaurant quality prawns. I'm making a jus out of the prawn shells and the prawn heads. Serving up bait for lunch, no, I'm not happy with it. Frozen squid and prawn from some captain telling us that it came from some place. Yeah, no, the boat will be fantastic. It could definitely be our downfall. The boys have been away for 20 minutes now, cleaning the fish. So I was just a bit worried. You look stressed. I want to get everything done in time. Why did you fish for 11 leather jackets? To be honest, we didn't choose to fish for 11 leather jackets. That's just the way it happened. Um, we'll see how it goes. How much time have we got left? 35 minutes. 35 minutes in total? Oh, hang on. Uh, 35 minutes total. So the blue team, they obviously mm. got back quick. You know, they decided they had enough fish. They've shot back to the dock here. They're working really calmly. They seem to be really organised. Sam's on his jobs. The girls are making dessert. So it seems really under control. I just hope they pull it off because it sounds good. And sounds the worst good. thing is, he's being disappointed. I didn't have to uh, whip these guys into shape at all. They all know what they're doing. They're all very competent chefs. Um, everybody in this team is doing their job really, really well. About the 15 minute mark, Trev is sort of finished on his sauce. Shit. It's really salty. I didn't salt that at all. It's really salty. Trev did the bisque and it was salty. Uh, that would have been from the, the prawns that would have been frozen in the seawater. And then they've been put in the stock, so I don't think they have been cleaned in, in fresh water to get that saltiness out. That saltiness has just been taken up by, by the sauce, and it wasn't pleasant. Um, so we had to come up with something different. I'm just going to do some burnt butter with some leftover prawns in it as the jus. You can put them around the outside of the fillet. You OK with that? There is no prawn bisque, and it is going to be this burnt, burnt butter with little bits of bait around the outside. OK, guys, you've got 15 minutes to go. 15 minutes to go. 
We don't have one single thing ready yet. Dean, I'm going to get the moose on now. Yes, thank you. That'd be great. Quickly cleaning the fish. Fish has arrived and we're on the road. We're on the road. We don't need to. I look around at all the different things that's still going and still need to be done, and I start to really freak out. The red team, yeah. they've got a 35 minute disadvantage. They came back late. Do you think that's made a difference to their chances to win? Yeah, but you know what? There's some good cooks on that team. Yeah. And I and look, as much as they are behind and it looks like they're behind, I think they might be able to just pull it through. Yeah. Everything is on time. Um, we're doing very well. The blue marwong has to be cooked quite delicately. I cooked it on its skin for about a minute and held it down. Oh, it's burning! <laughs> and then just put some butter in the pan and, and baste it with the butter. I am a little bit uh, afraid that the, the residual cooking is going to cook it by the time that the judges get their second course. Can I have a fish? Yep, yeah, be very careful. Turn it over? Yeah, it's got a beautiful crust on it. Oh, that's wicked! <laughs> OK, guys, you've just got under five minutes. You're about four minutes now. I'm stuffing the mousse into the zucchini flowers. I've got to get those on the fryer. The fish wasn't cooked yet. What? Lucas, you're doing the fish. Yeah, I'm doing the fish. OK. OK. What? Salt. I need a spoon. Beautiful dish. That is gorgeous. That is fantastic. Yeah, it's just that bait. It's, um, it's a bit of a worry for blue team, that bait. That's beautiful. There you go. Absolutely beautiful. Our plates just look sexy. Have a look. Well done, mate. You did really good. Right, guys, you've got one minute to go, yeah? That's one minute. We've only got a minute or two to go, and we're just plating like lunatics. Can I need that fish? Yeah, it's coming over. Send a dish in to the judges unfinished was just unthinkable for me. I was not going to accept that. Right, mate, I want it to be... <laughs> if we've screwed up the timing and we don't plate up, one of us is going home. We need teaspoons. Tools down. Anything? Time's up. Step away from the pans. Uh, it's judgment time. Matt, Gary and George and Peter from Flying Fish are going to taste our dishes. OK, guys, time to taste the dishes. Decide who's the winning team. I think it's the blue team to start off with. Trevor is a waiter. He knows that the way that he presents them, it counts towards us winning the challenge. So send your captain in to defend the team. The entree is a leather jacket potato salad with avocado and barbecued baby squid tentacles. Where did you get the squid from? It was actually the bait that we were using today. Oh, it's the but bait. Restaurant quality squid. Can you guarantee that? Because I we've can. got to eat that. I can. We've all tried it. It's good. Bait. You want to use bait in a first class dish? OK, that's madness. OK, Trevor, thanks very much. Thank you, chef. Enjoy. Well, shall we taste? I love it. Yep. Yeah. Gotta say, it doesn't sound good. You have to have a dish that you want to eat, and you don't want to have any sense of trepidation. You certainly don't want to know that this was bait on the fishing boat that they've just come off. I think it should be fine. But the way it was delivered, I don't I, I agree with you, yeah. An awful lot of diners will be sending that dish back. Oh, it smells it smells nice and fresh. The starter, particularly with the squid, is either going to be a spectacular success or a ridiculous failure. It's fishy. Oh, there's a fishiness of it. I, I taste like, I taste the bottom of the boat. It tastes to me like a dish that's trying to hide the core ingredient. I think that squid's pretty, a little bit stinky, I've got to say. I said one thing to those guys, one thing, and that was make sure that we can taste the main ingredient. I do like the presentation. I think it looks fantastic. And I think they put a lot of thought in there. You'd be happy to pay your money when you saw it. I'm not so sure when you've tasted it, you'd think it was such a bargain. Next. 
That fillet of fish just looks sensational on the plate with the nice the little shrimps on the outside with the tomato concuss. And that should eat beautifully. I'm very confident with that dish. Pan seared blue marwong served on bake Whitloff with Hawkesbury River prawns. The prawns. The prawns once again came from the captain of the boat. He caught them himself and froze them himself. Happy with the dish? The only thing is we did have a jug of sauce, but uh, it got cleaned up in the cleanup and is now gone. Um, and it just vanished. It does mean that our main doesn't have a sauce to go with it, which, you know, we could get cane for. That fish is impeccably cooked. Isn't it amazing um, how when a piece of fish is fresh and handled and cooked well, you don't really need much else. Fish is cooked beautifully. If I was in a restaurant that came to the table, I'd be excited by it. I'd be slightly let down by those little bits of prawn. Macerated strawberries with sabaglioni and a cat's tongue biscuit. Well, I think that's a great looking dessert. Quite a party piece. You really want to just dive in and see exactly what that's like. Close your eyes and you could be eating a restaurant dessert, wouldn't you, really? Really delicious dessert. It's nice. It's not eggy, so it's been cooked. So you sort of get this nice creamy, sort of foamy, warm sensation in your mouth. If I was reviewing that, I'd be quite excited by that. I think they've done a fine job. I think that's really attractive, and I'll be happy to have that. We plated up some nice dishes. The only question is if that bait is going to be well received by the judges, and I doubt that it is. Gary, all I can say is I am extremely proud of them, and I'm also pumped to see what the red team's going to give us, because uh, this was pretty good. Walking in with the entree, it wasn't just one plate. We had two. To start with, we have an amuse-bouche, which is a leek soup and a crispy ras skin. And for entree, we have uh, Sergeant Baker mousse, and that's in um, zucchini flowers. I hope they don't slam me for doing two and not meeting the brief. So the brief was to do three courses? That's right. So you've right. done four? I just thought it would be a nice uh, difference for our group to um, give you this to start with. They've broken the rules a little bit. They've served an extra course, a little amuse-bouche, you know, which is an amused mouth, as, as it is directly translated. Something to get the, the taste buds going at the beginning of the meal. And I think that's OK from my point of view. Um, I'm happy with that. I don't mind if they bend the rules a wee bit. That's rather nice. Everyone loves a little bit extra when they go out to dinner. So good on them. Good stuff. Great start. Exciting. Let's see whether or not these zucchini flowers taste as good as they look. Really lovely flavour. The fish is simply cooked and it's served with olive oil and lemon juice. A good texture in the fish. Having said that, I don't know whether you guys can still, but there is a metallic flavour left in your mouth. I can still taste it, but ever so slightly. Let's look at the main course for the red team. The only criticism I can make of the dishes is that the, the main wasn't quite balanced properly. I think there's a bit too much potato salad compared to the amount of fish we had. Pan fried leather jacket with potato salad, braised fennel, and a roasted pepper puree. But is this an entree on steroids or what? I'm sorry. Is it a potato dish with some seared bits of goldfish? Well, it's certainly a generous pile of large chunks of potato. It looks like Fred Flintstone's been out there with his, um, with his stone axe chopping them up. We really tried to make fish the hero. We really tried to make it beautiful. And we, we just really tried to cook it well and to impress with classy food. Yeah, never lick your knife. Never lick your knife. It's 
it's really nice. I'm really, wow. And, uh, and I was ready to jump in there and smash it, but it was really good, I liked it. Creamy potato, loaded with mayonnaise and herbs, crispy, crunchy, wet fennel that balances against that creaminess, beautifully cooked bit of fish, and that rich, dark capsicum flavour. It's a really, really good dish. This could be the dish that wins the challenge for them. Unless, of course, the dessert lets them down. For dessert, we've done a poached pear in red wine with a Chantilly cream, and then just to end it, um, a nice sweet wine. If you like your cream fluffy, your pear crunchy, and your syrup reduced so the spices are very strong, this is your dish. For me, those three things are the wrong way around. Yeah, they have fallen short, especially after what a cracking main course they served us. Well, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to thank Peter Curavita for the use of your beautiful restaurant at Flying Fish. Thanks so much. Have you got anything to say about, you know, the standard that you've seen today with the two teams? I think it's on a knife edge, really, between the two of them. Um, I think the red team did very well until the end and let us down. Um, and it was vice versa for the, for the blue teams. Look, we've got a really hard decision to make, guys. We have to decide who the winner is and who loses this challenge. Hello, everyone. This week's team challenge pushed you to limits like never before. The aim was to cook a three-course seafood meal to serve at the exclusive Flying Fish restaurant. The difficulty was, first, you had to head out to sea and catch the fish yourselves. You then had to clean and fillet the fish before cooking and serving it. The winner will spend an afternoon doing work experience in the kitchens of some of the most famous restaurants in Sydney, Otto and China Doll. <laughs> The losing team, however, will face the painful task of voting to send one of their own team members home. Blue team, we tasted your menu first. Overall, spectacular looking. Three dishes that all popped when they arrived into that dining room. The combination of that blue mawong, the beautiful pan-fried fillet, along with that caramelised Whitloff, was magnificent. Was a marriage made in heaven. So congratulations on that dish. But really, where you came flying home was the dessert. You guys did make the decision, though, to use the bait in both entree and main course. Quite controversial. Andre, why are you smiling, mate? I think, you know, the, the, um, the captain said it was good for consumption, but I'll possibly maybe domestic consumption. Um, I don't want to put my name to that, to, to serving up that, um, the prawns and the squid. That starter did let you down. There was a flavour in there I, I cannot explain, you know. You, all it reminded me of is when we'd get back from fishing and we'd wash out the bottom of the boat and that, that smell that, of walking around on, on, you know, fish scales and guts and stuff. It wasn't that good. What happened to the, the prawn jus or the prawn sauce? When I actually made it, um, I pulled it out and it was way, way, way too salty. I didn't uh, season it at all, but it became very, very salty. So we left it out. And then we ended up making a burnt butter sauce. Why didn't we see that sauce with the presented dish? Um, it actually went on the table with the rest of the food, but it didn't get collected and taken inside with the rest of it. I don't know where it went. It was just gone. Po? Yes. What do you think happened with the sauce? Um, <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, I did not know of a sauce and I didn't see the um, sauce that was in the jug. Red team, we debated the validity of the extra course. It's a generous act from a restaurateur chef to give a complimentary dish. 
And when it's a complimentary dish that tastes as good as that, with the true flavours of leek and potato, it was a pleasure to start the meal like that. Zucchini flowers, again, were magnificent. The sort of thing you want to start a meal with because it gets all those juices going in your mouth. Your main course looked clumsy. Myself and Peter both said it looked like a dish that Fred Flintstone had put together. Having said that, as well as eating our words, we ate all the dish. The flavours were impeccable. Dessert, however, was your lowest point. When you poach a pear, it's best not to serve it crunchy. So anyone that could have done a bit better? I, I really can't say anyone today because... It... Not one person? Yeah, um, you know, I could, but it was just it's on petty things, silly little things and... It's the little know, things that count. Yeah, of course it's a little... So everyone just works so well and, you know... No, no, you're, you're, not, you're not answering the question. Right, OK, I'm going to answer, answer your question. question. I will answer your question, George. Um, I thought it was a little bit difficult to find a position for Sandra um, for the pure fact, before we even started the challenge, um, you, wanted to, you didn't want to do desserts. What's your feelings about that? I don't think that that's fair because um, I actually got to do the pairs. I poached the pairs and um, whilst I was actually um, watching them and monitor them, monitoring them, I was actually asking if I could help anyone and I floated around and I did quite a lot. So I think that's a very unfair comment, Justine. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think I did really well. You did do a great job. Everyone did a great job. You did a fantastic job. I know I did. Okay. It's time for George and Matt to reveal the judges' verdict. The judges decided that the winning team in yesterday's challenge was red. <laughs> <laughs> we were all like stunned mullets. I think we were so, like so in shock. It was unbelievable. And I'm like, everyone's so quiet. Like, I'm wearing red, right? We're red. We won, we've won this. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. <laughs> we didn't react for five or 10 seconds. We all just sat there going, what? what? It was a very delayed reaction. We were just in shock. Reds, congratulations. Thank you. Blue team. Can I say, it was, it was difficult, yeah? It was so difficult, but unfortunately, there has to be a losing team, and you guys got that. Bloody shattered. Really disappointed. Blue team, you lost the challenge, and as a result, one of you must leave the MasterChef competition for good. I had hoped that uh, our food would have stood up, but it didn't. And that pretty much means that as the captain, my head is well and truly on the chopping block. Tomorrow night on MasterChef Australia. We worked so hard yesterday and it's not fun. The blue team go head to head. You kind of got to do whatever you can to stay in it. It's chef against chef. And for one person, the dream will end. At this stage, it is myself and Sam on the chopping block. I want to be here, but I was responsible for the dish that got the most criticism. Your dreams of becoming Australia's first MasterChef will come to a very fast end. 